So we started actually in the field by developing a method that could speed up the simulations in such a way that we can have the data and then actually use machine learning to solve the problems. Once we did that, then we started solving real problems for, for in the field and uh, trying to design materials that didn't exist uh, in the past. Hello everyone, I'm Alessandra from Material Pioneers. Today we will talk about machine learning and material science. You can follow all of our updates on www.materialpioneers.com. Today we will talk with Miguel Bessa, PhD student at TU Delft. Let's go. Hi Miguel, how are you? Hi Alessandra, I'm doing well, and you? Good, good. We are here in the Netherlands uh, trying to go ahead with these uh, online interviews. Today we're going to talk about machine learning and the first question for you is how did you end up doing research and why did you decide to integrate material science with machine learning? <laughs> I, I think as many researchers it was curiosity driven. You know, you, you want to understand the world around you and perhaps make a small contribution to uh, improve our understanding of the world. In our case, in my research group, we try to use computers and artificial intelligence to design new materials and structures that uh, don't exist uh, up to now. <laughs> and uh, how did this integration happen? A lot of uh, researchers in material science are yeah, definitely struggling uh, with all the codes and all the things that you need to learn from scratch most of the time to integrate these two parts, but this is becoming more relevant day by day. So how did you decide to go for it? And like, what, what was your contribution at the end? Because you just uh, went out with a publication. Yeah, right. So it, it, for us, it started a little bit uh, the other way around. We, we noticed that machine learning was very important and, and becoming uh, uh, highly relevant to fields like biology, even the fundamental uh, level in material science from first principle calculations and in many other fields. But the mechanics of materials and in mechanics in general, um, this was not the case for some reason. And we found out that apparently because the simulations were so expensive, you could not produce enough data to actually then use machine learning to solve your problems. So we started actually in the field by developing a method that could speed up the simulations in such a way that we can have the data and then actually use machine learning to solve the problems. Once we did that, then we started solving real problems for, for in the field and uh, trying to design materials that didn't exist uh, in the past. And uh, yeah, can you tell us a little bit more about your publication? Because I've been reading something, but uh, I really want to hear it from you. <laughs> sure. So we had this idea, this simple idea of transforming a, a, a material into something that becomes super compressible, just like the, the, the kitchen uh, uh, foam that you have, the sponge that you have in, in your kitchens. You can squeeze it into almost nothing, but those materials don't hold their shape very well. They're very soft. So we wanted to see if we could have a material that would hold the shape and still become super compressible if we wanted to. And uh, this material didn't exist, so we got inspired by the aerospace industry that has these very large structures that you can fold in very tight spaces. And uh, we then used machine learning to see if it was possible to alter this, this structure and create this material at a very small scale. It turned out that, uh, you know, with the maps that we obtained from machine learning, it was saying that it was possible. So we created it, we fabricated this material at a very, very small scale, at the nano scale, and uh, it turned out that, uh, that it worked and, uh, and uh, the material was, was actually possible to, to fabricate. That's great. I think this is also a great success for this type of integration. It's like the proof that it is not only just already happening, but that it's actually working and uh, you can not only make publications out of this, but you can actually yeah, you know, give that contribute that you were talking about. And uh, about that, like, we are here also with Material Pioneers to give some best practices. Um, so some tips. Uh, do you have a few tips for people, researchers that already want to, you know, join these uh, joint forces and uh, yeah, share data and use machine learning in their research? 
Yeah, so um, if you're new to the field, one thing I think it, it could be uh, quite useful is to, to start with a problem, you know, start with a question that you want to address, not necessarily from the machine learning side. So what is the problem that you have that you want to solve? And then see if machine learning can help in this quest to the solution. Um, so uh, if you start in the machine learning uh, uh, field, which is very vast, you can be a little bit daunted by all the possibilities that, that you see. To me, at least, it helps to go the other way around. Another thing I find useful is to uh, start from simple machine learning models and then build up in complexity uh, uh, as, as you go. For example, if you are going from uh, to another city nearby, you go by car, you don't take the plane. Only you take the plane if you want to go to another continent or another country. In machine learning, is a bit like that too. You can start with simpler models, like Gaussian processes, for example, and uh, they solve a, a large class of problems already. And if you want to have, uh, if that does work, then you can actually use a more complex algorithm, you know, like uh, deep learning, recurrent neural networks, and all these beautiful things that are being developed by the computer scientists. And finally, I would say that uh, it's also very important to leverage the open source community. In machine learning, there are lots of resources online and the community is very open. And you'll find many resources on GitHub and, and sites that are similar to GitHub that uh, have many in interesting solutions by people that thought about these problems very deeply. And later, when you actually get familiar with this and you make your own contributions, perhaps you can give back to the community and, and uh, make your own contributions and that can be very useful for, for other people. Uh, still related to this, I would suggest that you go into the website called paperswithcode.com. It's a fantastic website. I have no affiliate in what, whatsoever with it. It's a fantastic website with many resources that you'd uh, probably like to, to explore. Well, thank you so much. Uh, this is definitely a great contribution uh, to our uh, resources slash tool pages. Uh, we're going to share these resources on our website and blog uh, and make sure that we connect you with everybody that is interested uh, into uh, yeah, joining this uh, uh, machine learning integration um, uh, field. And uh, thank you so much for being here with us today. And uh, yeah, looking forward to meet you again, uh, possibly in person. <laughs> thank you very much, Alessandra. It was really a pleasure and, and take care. Thanks. Thanks.